Hey, welcome to Graphic Policy Television, GPTV. I'm Brett. Now, San Diego Comic-Con has come and gone. I'll admit, I'm still recovering a bit from it. Very, very tight, tired, and the uh, uh, adjustment on time has not gone well for me. I'm old. I'm old. That seems to be the issue. Uh, but I've, I've had some time to think about and reflect upon the convention. And I don't think I've really have ever done this before, but I kind of want to talk about talk about the, the winners and the losers of the convention, what stood out in uh, good and bad as a whole. Uh, so bear with me. This is going to be kind of an interesting one. I think I'm going to go through the, the winners first, then maybe we'll get to the losers a little bit. Uh, but as a whole, I, you know, I, you're hearing it from everywhere. I said it in my initial first thoughts is comics was the big winner. Uh, the amount of press hits, the amount of news coming out of San Diego Comic-Con, I think was massive. Uh, when I was done with the show, I still had dozens and dozens and dozens of articles yet to write uh, concerning the comic industry. Uh, the press teams did an amazing job. It kept things flowing. They saw the gap that was left by Hollywood and actors not attending and decided to fill it, and they filled it really, really well. Uh, there was news that broke. Um, there was interesting panels, uh, and they took advantage of the comic creators having buzzworthy signings, uh, giveaways, and more. They did an amazing job. Kudos to the whole industry. And I have to say, you know, this includes publishers, creators, and fans. Everyone is a winner uh, at this year's Comic-Con. It really showed the comics in Comic-Con uh, and showed what happens when, you know, comics needs to step, step up. They do and can and can uh, can make a hell of a lot of news. Uh, so hopefully they, uh, in future years, will um, give a nice big giant middle finger to Hollywood and uh, tread upon their path. Uh, usually in the past, um, my notice and my opinion is uh, I would get a lot of press and news before the show and then the show itself would have been pretty quiet. Uh, this year, the, the news was pretty consistent throughout the show. I mean, we're, I'm probably 100-plus uh, stories just on comics from the show. Um, the other is interesting is is obviously Loser is going to be uh, the uh, the studios and the actors not showing up. Um, not really calling actors losers, but they, they lost out because they couldn't do the promotion. Uh, but I would give a lot of credit to Star Trek. Uh, as a property, they had a, a lot of shows uh, out right now that you know need to get the fans excited, and they did that. They did that with uh, a lot of announcements, a musical um, episode was announced, and they released uh, a bunch of videos. I think they showed that you can promote properties without the actors and do it really, really well. There's another more that I think did that as well, uh, and that is uh, Hulu, Hulu Animation specifically. Uh, they did a lot of prep before the show to get uh, press interesting, and they um, definitely created buzz for Futurama, which has returned uh, with their giant Planet Express building, as well as their little drone show, which I think sealed the deal. Uh, all, I think, who basically Hulu Animation and Star Trek showed you can promote properties without the actors and do it really, really well, and not also, and also not come off as assholes. Um, I think they did it in a very tasteful way and did it really, really well. Um, winners, since you know the actors and the films weren't there, is floor and panel. The floor was really, really busy in a in a good way, and panels were packed. Whether or not the panels took place in the convention center or outside, they were busy. They were packed, uh, and and everyone I talked to seemed to be really, really happy with that, and seemed to have a really good show on the floor, selling items, getting um, uh, lines to do um, autograph sessions and all that. Um, and I think the other interesting is. Though the floor was busy, it didn't feel quite like uh, the traffic jam shit show that it has been in the past. Uh, without the actors on the floor, and without, I would say, as the studios and the, uh, the promotions they sometimes do, uh, there wasn't as many choke points and traffic jams as we normally see. Uh, and to me, that was really fantastic. Though there were a lot of lines, there was a lot of booths that were busy, good thing, uh, it wasn't due to just actors showing up and people stopping and snapping photos. Um, you know, overall, I, it, it was a good experience. I think this was kind of almost the ideal floor, if that makes sense. Uh, Invincible as a property, I think, did really, really well. Season 2 was announced after a, a hell of a delay, uh, and the Magic Game Dice game, uh, Magic Games Dice game that was uh, debuted at the show seemed to be constantly sold out when I go to the Skybound booth to check it out. Um, so that's awesome on that. There's also was the video game that was announced. Um, I forgot what it's called, uh, but that had a really nice display, it had a nice sign up. Uh, so Invincible as a whole seems to be a pretty hot property, uh, which is good for Skybound because The Walking Dead seemed to be, well, dead. 
Um, there wasn't much buzz. We didn't see much on the floor, and any news coming out of the show would, was a kind of minimal um, cosplay that you'd normally see tons of for Walking Dead just wasn't present. Uh, so it seems Invincible, Invincible is taking and filling that gap that for Skybound, The Walking Dead um, has kind of left up. Um, Barb and Hammer, Barbie Hammer, whatever you want to call it, uh, that, I mean, it was buzzed throughout the show. I mean, people... Uh, we're talking about it. They were cosplaying as it. They were wearing shirts. There was one awesome shirt that I saw someone that had it that had the Barbie hammer across, and I kind of wanted it. Uh, this this had fun. Uh, there was a fun aspect to it. People kind of talked about it and, and really seemed to be interested in a good way as to how the weekend box office was going to go between those two. So um, kudos to all of them. It, it just really, you know, there's a lot of talk leading up to it. There was this competition, but in the end, it seemed like a, a lot of fun. Um, speaking of fun, Junji Ito and uh, Makoto Yukimura uh, both had a hell of a show. Uh, Junji Ito had a release of his new uh, collection, uh, Soishi, which was constantly sold out at the Viz booth, and then uh, Makoto, uh, as well as having a, a art display. Um, that was a hot, hot uh, a thing for people to go to. There was a lot of people posting up photos about it. Uh, there was art on the floor as well that they were checking out. So uh, uh, Ito's popular uh, as well as as he should be. Um, the only one uh, interesting, I've never read uh, Vinland Saga, uh, so I don't really know uh, Makoto Yukimura very well. I want to check it out now. It was um, a beautiful booth which showed off the art, which was really cool, and signings that were really, really well organized. There were hot tickets that a lot of people wanted uh, that were limited. Props for that signing. It was really well done. Uh, It was not out of hand and I think organized really well. Uh, Transformers was buzzworthy. Not only did they have a, a, a popular panel uh, with the hot hash scan release, there was a lot of debuts from Hasbro. Uh, Transformers back as a hot property, not just in toys, but comics as well. Uh, and I would say toys as a whole were a really hot uh, property. Super 7 with their Thundercats uh, were really, really popular. Uh, Funko was constantly busy, uh, and we have some cool stuff with Funko coming up. Uh, something we don't necessarily cover a lot and talk about that in a little bit. But I think as a whole, a lot of booths that were selling vital, uh, vinyl figures seem to be doing really, really well. Uh, there was constant crowds around them, uh, and that was just, you know, good on them. Uh, the one movie I think that that did stand out and did well was Project K slash Kelki 2898 AD. Um, I received some some teases about this leading up to it. Uh, it was, didn't get a chance to be able to go because it was it conflicted with other stuff. But it is uh, a film that's going to be coming out um, from I guess Hollywood is the term. Uh, but it was the first, apparently the first foreign film to be promoted in Hall H, which is a pretty big deal. Uh, the the debut or the the trailer looks really really cool, uh, and I would say if if the strike drags on, you're going to see a lot of this potentially at next year's uh, Comic Con, which is which was pretty cool. Um, the other thing I think was interesting to wrap up the winners is the non-typical press push. Uh, there was a lot of cool uh, interviews I got to do that I would say I probably wouldn't have normally been able to do at Comic Con. There have been other stuff that would have um, uh, overshadowed it. We're going to have those those interviews up, um, but you know it, it ran from everything from as I said something cool Funko that we'll be discussing uh, to to cosplay. Uh, to, to LARPing cosplay. Um, there's some really, really neat stuff that we got to chat about. So I'm excited for all that and also two things with Transformers. Really excited about those. It was, it was great interviews. I think I, I haven't interviewed folks in a long time and, and um, it made me really want to do it again. Um, but I was getting a lot of press pushes for stuff that I don't think I would normally see at Comic-Con. Uh, the unknown, which I'll put in the middle, is Tabletop Games. Uh, they've always kind of been this really... Um, also done at conventions. There were some panels, uh, which was awesome. Gloomhaven was on the floor, and the Invincible Dice game seemed to, seemed to be a hot item at the Skybound booth. Um, San Diego Comic Con is always really close to Gen Con, which I would know, which would make it really difficult to do both shows. Uh, but I'm wondering if Hollywood stays away next year, if it is worth you know putting in the effort and the time, and maybe trying to fill in a little bit of the gap uh, at, at Comic Con. I think there's. Uh, There's gold to be struck, potentially, if you know what you're doing. Um, Very different show, though, and I know um, game conventions or game tend to have to have a lot of space to show off their games. Um, They they do do demos on the mezzanine, but not many people know the mezzanine exists. Uh, So beyond Gloomhaven, beyond the floor, the Invincible Dice game, which was also the Walking Dead Dice game, was also there. Uh, Both... Uh, were about really kind of what stood out game-wise on the floor. So I kind of put that in the middle. 
lots of potential there, I think. Losers. Clearly, uh, movies and television. With the, with the studios gone, there was very little that came out uh, that was buzzworthy as far as that. Uh, Hall H was dead beyond uh, Project K, uh, Kelke. Um, no news, I think, really kind of stood out at all um, from there. And even the lines to get into Hall H, there was not quite the, the sleep outs like you normally expect uh, people decide to do other things. Um, cosplay also seemed to be down this year. I thought it was really interesting. I didn't know notice as much as that. Uh, and I'm not sure if it's at this show or kind of as a whole, but maybe cosplay, the, the cosplay fad is, is dying a little bit. Um, going into the cosplay being losers, uh, there was a rumor of a cosplayer as Ahsoka who was COVID positive that was still attending the show uh, and not staying isolated. So screw you, Ahsoka, cosplayer, whoever you are. Um, that's not cool. Um, they basically, I think, ruined things for a lot of people after the show and could cause a lot of damage. Uh, and I know a lot of people are coming back positive. Thankfully, I am not. Um... Also, I think Losers, the pop of the comic publisher is not there. This was a year to strike, and there was opportunity, and it was missed. If you were not on the floor, well, it is what it is. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Gas Lamp as well. There's uh, the show on the floor, but outside of the convention, there's tons of things going on. Uh, the usual uh, Cartoon Network display uh, did really, really well. Um, and some of the, the convention or the uh, hotels by the convention center did really, really well. But the gas lab as a whole didn't seem quite to have the buzz like it normally does. I know there were some activations that were popular, but as a whole, it did not quite have the, the eye catching. Uh, experience like normal. I walked through the gas lamp and nothing caught my eye. It was really kind of uh, a muted year. Uh, and speaking of fumbling, Blue Beetle, where was it? There was a uh, costume that was on display, and that was about it. Um, Warner Brothers tends to kind of screw up the promotion of films at Comic-Con, and I would say this was a big one. With the film just weeks away, uh, without uh, actors being there, there was still a lot of opportunity to do some stuff and uh, do some fun stuff uh, that could have been very, very creative. Uh, Warner Brothers decided to do nothing. Uh, there was some costumes from Aquaman, there was a costume from Blue Beetle, which is awesome, it looks amazing in person, uh, but promotion was, was like non-existent, I thought. So while DC showed up and did an amazing job uh, by themselves, uh, Warner Brother, I th and Warner Brothers Discovery uh, as a whole, I think just utterly failed um, and is part of the loser section beyond just movies and TV. Uh, so those are my opinions. I kind of want to see what you all thought. If there's anything that stood out to you about San Diego Comic-Con 2023, sound off in the comments. I really, really do want to hear this. Uh, as always, we got tons of news still coming. There's a lot of interviews I need to post up, all from San Diego Comic-Con 2023. You can find those at graphicpolicy.com. Some of them will be posted uh, on various social networks on Facebook and, and TikTok, the audio stuff. Uh, you can check that out. Um, but as always, if you want the latest comic news, graphicpolicy.com. or on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Tumblr, Instagram, TikTok, Mastodon, Blue Sky, all at Graphic Policy, keeping it nice and consistent. Until next time, keep reading those comics and keep it geeky. Hey, thanks for watching the previous video from Graphic Policy Television. Just by watching, you help support our site. Thank you so much. Now, if you're watching these videos, you probably care about geeky things like movies, television, comic books, toys, games, video games, you name it. You can go and subscribe right now to our YouTube channel to stay in touch and catch all the new videos, or check out our website at graphicpolicy.com. There's a nice link on this end of the video. But as always, thank you for watching. Keep on rocking and keep it geeky.